everybody and welcome to another episode. Today we're discussing what happens and what you should do if you have a pre-supported file that tends to fail, meaning that you have something that you either purchased or maybe you're a patron like we are to a bunch of different folks and in our case we use them for merchant stuff, you may use them for personal stuff, but this is pretty much what we all go through. And this particular file we're looking at is a prop, it's a coin, and the way this was supported is fine. Um, there's a few things I probably wouldn't have done the same way myself, but everybody has their own style and their own method. My issues with this take a few different forms. One is the plank that begins the bottom of the print, um, which is a pretty large sliver that goes across the bottom there, which is, I'm just going to say, not supported enough to prevent sagging and heavy deformations and warping at the bottom, which means you're going to be sanding the heck out of that. I don't like that because it's a prop. You really don't want any of the edges to get really marred up really badly. And so for me, I would probably tend to just use either the lightest possible supports and use a lot of them around the area that needs the supporting, or I would tilt this in a different direction. But there's a couple of other points here we can hit on that are other reasons why I have issues with this particular supporting method. This corner here at the bottom is also completely ignored where technically you should at least have a few support tips touching that top area at the very least because it's where the most pressure is going to happen so you have a higher chance of pancaking which is exactly where we hear a lot of people have failures on this particular print of course there are a few ways you could enhance this particular supporting method by adding a couple rows of inline supports on either side you can add one on the opposite side to where it starts, and then you could add one along the row where it actually starts. You don't have to do inline, of course. You can just go one by one and kind of add in supports where you feel they're necessary to add additional um, pressure leverage to balance out the particular material and the part. Now, like I said, this is a prop. It's solid. It's a decently sized piece um, coming in at about 90 millimeters tall, so you're looking at a pretty large a chunk of resin that's going to be printed and so printing it straight up and down you're going to have a lot of pull on the bottom part and I still think this orientation is probably not the best choice for this particular shape or part and we'll cover that when I start going over my orientation on how I reorient this part. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is bring in the raw STL with no supporting attached to it whatsoever. Yes, they probably need to repair. That's usually the case with every file. I don't know why that is. Then we're going to want to flip it. And we're going to do a 90 degrees, and uh, sorry, negative 90 degrees in this particular instance. And then we're going to tilt it a bit onto one of its tippy tippy little tiny corners there um, <clears throat> just to balance out where this is going to start and the direction that I wanted to start in. Um, there's a couple reasons for this. I, I really prefer to start my prints with small areas and build up to the larger areas because the smaller area will build up into a platform so the larger area can build itself off of the material that is already there. This requires less supporting overall up and down the print but I'm still going to focus on the areas that have the yellow because I still don't want any pancaking on my details. This is a super, super, super cool looking detailed coin. And yeah, that means I'm going to attach some supports to the actual face of both sides of the design. However, I'm going to use my super light and my light supports on this. So we're not really going to see any damage at all on the final print. These supports just come off. Um, and you can watch a couple of my shorts that I've demonstrated how easily they do actually come off. Um, once you get the islands addressed in the particular orientation chains that you've chosen for this particular coin, like I said, I'm tilting it on its side, and I'm also just keeping it straight up and down. No backwards or forwards tilt whatsoever. 
We're going to use the inline tool to place rows of support along the bottom, and we're going to use it to try to place them as symmetrical as possible, although the surface is kind of bumpy and not really perfectly straight, so you're going to get a little deviation in where those supports are going to show up, and that's okay. We can always manually either move, delete, or move some around. And um, just try to place them evenly so that way you have even support distribution through the areas that are going to have the most pressure. That's that big angle at the front. Um, that's that starting point there at the very corner. And any kind of rough angles that you're going to see accelerating through the print, you definitely want to make sure you pay more attention to as you um, add up your supporting. And again, this is all using the same support method that I have discussed with you guys time and time again. So if you've watched some of my other videos, then you already know my style, you already understand um, the levels, the, the, the sizes, the tips, and the bars. But you can always check my settings in the description of every one of our videos. We've been posting that stuff since the very beginning because we want you guys to learn and understand as we learn and you know get better at this stuff. Because hey, you know what? We learn new things every single day we get access to new tools every single day, and we know more about this um, as a, um, uh, a method uh, and, and getting it better. You know, with each iteration of either the slicer software or, you know, the iteration of the different tools, there's so many more improvements on the way we can do this job. So the more I can share with you guys, the better, you know, that is for everybody. And I really I hope you guys get something out of these. So <laughs> anyway, we'll move on and continue adding all the supports necessary. Um, I'm putting a decent amount of supports on the front there where you can see those yellow spots and I'm using the support painter to try to save some time and just drop in supports. Now what this is doing is it's creating like a little cascade of tips, I'm sorry, bottoms of the bars down there, the bases, that are forming at the edges of the raft. And that's okay, um, they're still going to be pretty easy to break off, I'm just literally going to be able to snap those puppies right off. So this really isn't going to pose a problem. I'm going to put a few heavies, or sorry, mediums, on the very, 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 very bottom. I'm going to pepper those in a little bit here and there, just to give it some stability support on the very, very bottom. And that edge is going to be that um, long curved edge that's going to come up there um, at an angle. The reason that I'm supporting that a little bit heavier than the rest of it is because it is going to be a consistent angle through a large portion of the print, and I don't want any... Um, warping or bending with that particular edge. I want that to be nice and straight like it's supposed to be for the particular prop. So it's important to me to make sure that we got that angle really good. And this is a pretty quick wrap up. We're not really going to take too much more time with this one and the islands are pretty much good. The bracings are solid with a click. They're, you know, done. Um, we can do the layer by layer, and I'll kind of demonstrate how much of a clean build this will be. You're going to start with a tiny little sliver down here at the bottom, and yeah, it needs a little extra support on its starting point. Got one little medium guy in the middle. It's not going to be enough, I think, for that. Um, but it doesn't start that big. It actually starts a little bit smaller. I'm actually a couple layers up, um, but it starts at a good little corner. Then you're going to build up into this little kind of like triangular shape there and that's just going to continue building up at angles and the good thing about that is is because you're constantly working at angles everything is building upwards at an angle and it's building up on top of each other so the light supports will be enough to support this piece without us having to add too many mediums in there and I've even put a couple sub lights in there as well um, that are really really small to help along some of that process as well so we, we really are kind of doing this the minimal way with the supporting style and I think that's important when you want super high detail and a solid piece because again it's a coin so you want it to have some weight if you were to say have this electroplated and get it made metallic or even if you were to paint it metallic you want it to have some weight if you were using this as a prop you want to be able to flip this or put it on the table or toss it onto a table and it actually have a little clunk to it rather than it just kind of being like whoomp and having absolutely no heft whatsoever will not be a very convincing prop. Uh, prop. So I think that's important. Kind of like the same way if you build like a sword prop, you're usually going to leave like a hole in the center where you can put like a piece of metal or tubing, um, something in the middle there that, that'll just make it a little bit more reinforced. Once you finish your layer by layer searching and you're sure that you've got all the areas that are important there, 
and go ahead and head on over to the export. Now remember, even if you're not working on this particular item or model or the uh, vital model that I'm working on, um, don't fret that because honestly what you're looking for here and what you're trying to compare is the workflow. What you want to remember and take away from this kind of video is that what we're doing is we take an object that's been pre-supported. Okay, we realize that there's an issue. Maybe we printed this, we had a pancake, we had a complete failure, whatever the case happened, we have to reconsider how this is being done in order to accommodate what we needed to do. And so in that case, you have to take the object, take a look at it, look at the shape that it is. Does it need to be hollowed? Did the people who pre-support this just kind of overlook that because they assume that people don't want to deal with hollowing? Um, did the piece get hollowed and perhaps one of the holes got compromised? That's an issue that Lychee often has when the holes are placed using its own native hole creation system and just using it as it is. Um, there's also a numerous amounts of other issues, and like we saw in this particular case, I think the pancaking issue that's happening for some of the folks that printed this piece is due to the lack of support in the corner, and also the lack of support on the bottom is causing a little bit of a sagging deformation. Now, I didn't do a test print personally using the pre-supported file because I don't usually use pre-supported files at all. We reorient most of the files that we get anyway, so I did not experience any failures or print weirdness with this particular prop when I printed it myself. It actually looked really fine. There was no problems. I have reoriented it and re-supported it this way versus the original method that I used on it, which is actually printing it upside down. Um, and both methods seem to work okay. Uh, we're going to run a couple more tests with this particular print style and support and see how that works out in different colors and uh, we'll let you know how the results turn out for all of that. Anyway guys, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. As usual, don't forget to hit that subscribe, click that like button, and ring the bell if you want notifications about future episodes and content that we publish. Thanks so much for watching again, and we'll see you all again soon.